One, two, three, four, one. Then I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. Not a trace of doubt in my mind. I'm in love. Ooh, I'm a believer. I could leave her if I tried. <laughs> So uh, hello everyone, this is Rosie of Cambodian S and sitting next to me are uh, the band members of the US Air Force Band of uh, Pacific Final Approach and they are in Cambodia but what for? So let's meet them all together. Uh, thank you so much, I know that you are very busy since your time here is very short. So the very first and quick question to you, why are you in Cambodia today? Yes, well, first of all, thank you so much for having us. We're delighted to be here. Um, this is our first time in Cambodia. Yeah. We're, we're enjoying the beautiful country and uh, the wonderful people. And uh, yeah, we came here at the request of the U.S. Embassy uh, to celebrate the United States uh, Independence Day. Mm -hmm. And so we are supporting the embassy, but also getting the opportunity to do some outreach in the community and very excited to play at the Hard Rock Cafe tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing here. Yeah. So uh, what is it like to be in Cambodia for the first time and then like give your performance? So it's uh, for some of us, this is our first time mm -hmm. in even this part of the world. I recently came in January mm -hmm. um, to Japan for the first time, not really spending a lot of time in Asia. Um, and then this is also the first time in Cambodia. So it's just, it's an amazing experience. Um, the culture is the beauty of all the, the plants and just the, the absolute gorgeous scenery that we see every day. It's, it's just, it really feels, I feel very lucky that I'm able to be here and spend time today. Yeah, um, I heard that you arrived in the country, I think, uh, Tuesday midnight, mm -hmm. um, uh, Wednesday morning. So I think like three days already, like two days already. So what are the activity that you have been doing so far? You can. Yeah. So far, we have supported um, the U.S. Embassy Fourth of July celebration party, which we played at last different people from around the world who work at the embassy, and uh, just bringing some fun music to the party. Yeah, and what was like? How was the performance? Like, what did you perform last night to celebrate U.S. Independence Day? I'll let our music director. <laughs> So uh, this group that we have, that we brought to Cambodia, um, it's our rock band. Rock. We have one horn player, so we're playing a lot of pop music, we're playing a lot of classic rock, um, we played some American country, mm -hmm. um, old and new, a mixture of both, and these are our two vocalists here, so they do a great job of covering that wide amount of uh, American pop music, American rock. Yeah, the theme of the party was the great American road trip, so we played songs like Life is a Highway, Mm -hmm. Route 66, um, songs about being on a road trip in America. No, oh, okay. It's all about the fun stuff, the road trip. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so why do you think is it important like to perform in Cambodia and to let other Cambodian like really witness the U.S. Uh, Independence Day? Um, it's really the mission of, of the band to uh, connect with people through music. That is uh, what we do. Uh, we travel around this region, not just to Cambodia, but all over the Indo-Pacific, mm -hmm. and um, use music as an international language to be able to build partnerships, build friendship, uh, build camaraderie with, uh, with the countries here. So that's what we're here to do in Cambodia, and it's been uh, a lot of fun to do that. We also performed at the uh, Royal University of Fine Arts, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of fun. We worked with the students there and did a collaborative performance with them, uh, and that was a really cool experience. Uh, yeah. And like since uh, last year, like the U.S. State Department launched the Global Music Diplomacy Initiative, if I'm not wrong. So like, like to what extent do you think that through music, through your performance, can strengthen the U.S. and Cambodia uh, friendship? Um, I've seen it time and time again. Um, I've been in doing this job for 13 years. I've traveled all over Europe, all over Africa, uh -huh. and now all over the, this region of the world. And time after time, I've seen music break barriers and create bonds between people who may not speak the same language, um, but it's just such a powerful way for us to uh, come together, to um, share in, in humanity with each other, even even if we don't speak the same language. So music is very powerful. Okay, so we can say music connects people all, all around the world, right? Yes, I think so, absolutely. Yeah. 
So right now I'm starting to curious, like uh, your band's name is Why Not Approach. So what's with the name? What's the <laughs> meaning behind the final approach? <laughs> Uh, it's a, an aviation term, so a final approach of an aircraft coming into land. Oh. Uh, so that's the the meaning of it is uh, is when an airplane is landing, it's the final approach. Yeah. So, so um, the band uh, perform all around the Pacific region, mm -hmm. right? Like, so like, what is it like to travel around and then like perform all over the country in the Pacific region? What what is it like for you? It's a very interesting experience because we go to different countries. For example, last month we were in Mongolia, which is an extremely different culture from where we live in Japan, mm -hmm. from Cambodia as well. So with every new country that we go to, we have to do some research on customs, culture, the music there, and sort of tailor our product, our musical product, to um, what suits the needs of that mission. And it's really fun to learn about other cultures and other traditions and uh, sort of meld our American traditions with those cultures. Yeah, so you said you do the research before going to the country. So before coming to Cambodia, I am sure you did your research about our cultures and uh, traditions. So like, what have you learned about the Cambodian culture? Well, the first thing I learned was that I don't think I could sing the national <laughs> anthem. I, <laughs> I, I listened to it and thought, oh, that's really difficult. So I was thankful last night we had another Cambodian vocalist that sang it so beautifully. Um, and I would love to learn more about traditional music and mm -hmm. how to sing in that style. Research? Yeah, I would, I would also like to add that when we uh, perform at Rafa with the students um, and they were able to come and perform um, Cambodian music for us on traditional instruments that was such an amazing yeah. like enriched cultural experience because the uh, the instruments are, are different than what we would play in the United States or in the Western culture so the sounds and, and uh, there was an instrument that was modeled after a crocodile <laughs> and uh, it was just such a great and amazing and beautiful natural sound that I thought was was even just through that, just through the instruments. Um, we've only been here for a few days, so we, we were still planning on doing some more exploring. Mm -hmm. um, but just having that experience and exposure from the students playing the musical instruments that are traditional to Cambodia, that sort of taught us some of the, the uh, culture and let us experience some of that without having to go very far. And, um, yeah. 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 Um, it's really neat when we were at the university with the students where uh, we were able to play some of our American music and they um, you know, listened and then came up and we collaborated together and they played American music but then we also were able to play um, Arapia uh, with them and we, we sang uh, with them and uh, it was just really neat to have us all together playing both American music and a, a Cambodian song as well so it was a pretty cool experience. Yes, I think you should maybe one day come in to collab with um, the Cambodian art artists or the Cambodian students in the Wufa? Like, do you have like, have you ever given any thoughts about that? Um, I would love to come back to Cambodia. <laughs> in fact, we're talking about uh, trying to make that happen um, next year. So, um, yeah, it would be great if we could come and have a little bit more time so we can do mm -hmm. more collaborations like that. Yep. So about the band, mm -hmm. about the band, I think it's quite new to the Cambodian people. Like not many know like the U.S. Air Force band or like the final approach. So, what do you want the Cambodian audience to know about your band? Um, yeah, so the U.S. military has a long history of having musicians who also serve in the military, um, and we're just uh, continuing that heritage of uh, going back to Glenn Miller in the World War II era. Um, that was kind of the beginning of military music, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's a tradition that we've continued to uphold and uh, one that, that we um, are very fortunate to get to not only serve our country and support our nation, um, but also to use our talents and, and music and, and, you know, have the opportunity to uh, reach people, connect with people and share our culture with them and, and learn about their culture as well. So it's a really unique uh, job, one that I'm very fortunate to have and enjoy very much. And yeah, very thankful for it. So yeah, so um, 
As I learned, you also provide the educational and community outreach within like 35 countries, if I'm, I'm not wrong. So what is it? Like, can you explain to us more about it? Um, <clears throat> well, that is also one of the very important aspects of our job. And then we're very fortunate to not only be able to perform in these different countries, wherever we are, um, wherever an Air Force band is stationed, like uh, Sergeant Hughesby mentioned in Europe, mm. they do the same thing in that area. So as we're stationed in Japan, we get to go in this region to 35 different countries and uh, just offer any sort of insights that we might have about our trades. So musically specific, um, um, Airman Hughesby is a vocalist, so she'll do something that's vocal specific. I'm a guitarist, so I'll kind of go towards the strings, um, but also to just just the general um, aspect about being a performer and being a musician and the dedication that it takes to perform and do those duties every day. So it's just it's whatever knowledge that we can pass on in the moment is what we'd like to try and do. Yeah. Um, before most of us joined the military, we were working musicians in the civilian world and often uh, did a lot of teaching. Mm -hmm. I personally had a uh, very long career of teaching before joining, so it's really fun to be able to incorporate some of those experiences from before we joined into our military uh, position and share some of those prior experiences with people all over the world. Yeah. So now it's time for personal questions, I would say. Like, I am really curious, like, what gets you into the music and, like, join the Air Force band? Like, can you give a, um, like, the background of, like, what gets you into what you are right now? Mm. Um, good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I grew up in a musical family, and um, music was just always a part of, of my life at home. Um, and eventually, as I, I got older, I, I began to get more serious about it. Uh, when I graduated from high school, I went to university and studied music, um, mm -hmm. got a bachelor's degree, and then went on to graduate school and got a master's degree in music as well. Um, it was just something that I, I always loved and was passionate about and wanted to, uh, I wanted to do that for my career for the rest of my life. And uh, the Air Force has just given me a really unique opportunity to get to do that and pursue my passion, my love of music, uh, but also do it in, in service to my country and uh, you know, for the greater good of, like, like we talked about earlier, just using music as a way to, to bridge cultures, to bridge uh, and, and create friendships and partnerships um, through music. So yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate to do it. And that's really kind of a, the path that I took. I don't know if you guys yeah. want to talk about it. It's very similar. Yeah, you can share. So it's like music has been in your blood. So yes, yeah. definitely a very similar, similar <laughs> experience growing up. I knew, um, I started playing music when I was 11 mm -hmm. and no one in my family played music. Mm -hmm. um, I was the first one and I knew as soon as I started within the same year that that was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. It was just, which is a little unusual for uh, a student and a kid, but I feel very lucky that I was able to know that very early on. Um, and it, similar Air Force allowed me and gave me this opportunity to perform and serve and teach and outreach mm -hmm. and it really is just something that I'm very thankful to be a part of this larger organization and to be able to come to beautiful places like Cambodia and share our experience with you. Yeah. Yeah, similar to them, I always knew I wanted to be a singer from <laughs> the time that I could make noise basically. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, this job is a great opportunity to be able to do what I love and you know, share that with other people in a meaningful way and make great friends and travel the world. It's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, so like, what have all of this experience changed you as a person? Like since you are pursuing what you love and also like you are able to bridge the culture and also like to share culture. So what all of this have changed you as a person? Yeah, I think having the opportunities to see other parts of the world and experience other cultures, um, I think it's absolutely changed my life completely. Um, living abroad, living in other cultures, um, it's just, it's eye-opening, you know, if, mm -hmm. if you only ever stay in the United States or you only ever stay in one place and never see other cultures or see other things, I think you, you're, you're maybe a bit, um, yeah, just missing out on so many things out there in the world so I'm that's for me the biggest the biggest
biggest plus, I guess, to this is that I've been able to see and experience so many different things in the world. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing that I'd also like to add to that message is that um, there's so many things that are unique to each culture and each place that we go to, but at the same time, what I've learned in my travels is that there's a lot of similarities mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. people in general, and mm -hmm. even if you can't speak the language, there's things that if you can tell when there's a friendly smile mm -hmm. or like a nod, and that, that really bridges us together as people. Mm -hmm. And the ability to play music, like we mentioned earlier, we, you know, we've played with people who we don't speak a single word of the same common language, but when we play music and we share that music together, it's, it's almost like speaking a language and it's a very magical and unique mm -hmm. experience, is what I love. Yeah, it's like music make us all one, mm -hmm. you would say. Yeah. <laughs> and how about you? Uh, I would agree with both of them. Just being able to travel and see other cultures, it really opens your eyes. In the U.S., you know, our country is so large and we mm -hmm. don't border a lot of other countries. So it takes, you know, a lot to get overseas and see other places. So just to be in this region of the world where we can have access to so many different cultures and get to go experience those is really such a gift. Yeah. So, um, like, it start come up to my mind. Like, you said you're based in Japan. Mm -hmm. And... Like why is that? Like why in Japan or in the U.S.? Like can you maybe like share with us this little information that maybe the audience wants to know? Um, yeah, so we have Air Force bases, of course, yeah. all over the world, um, and many of them are with uh, partnerships with mm -hmm. host nations. So we have a partnership with Japan. Okay. Uh, so we share an air base with the Japanese uh, Air Self Defense Force. So we um, uh, have, yeah bases all over the world and mm -hmm. bands mm -hmm. at uh, some of those bases who cover the region around uh, where that base is. So there are several across the United States. Yep. There's one in, in Europe, in mm -hmm. Germany, um, there's one in Japan and we cover this part of the world and travel and, and do uh, musical diplomacy. Um, so yeah, we're, we're kind of scattered all over the place. Yeah, all over the world. Yes. All right, so before we conclude this conversation, just maybe can you share with us like what are you looking forward to the most in your career as a music in the Air Force band? Yeah. <laughs> like for the future, yeah. maybe. For the future, I just hope that we get to do more things like this. I mean, this is really the highlight of the job is when we get to come to other countries and meet people, experience other cultures. Um, so that's, that's my hope, is just to remain stationed in a part of the world where we can continue to travel and experience mm -hmm other cultures. Okay. One thing that I would like to mention is that in what we do, um, people see us performing on stage, they see us singing, playing guitar, playing rock music, but what they don't understand is that we do a lot of other jobs behind the scenes yeah. in order to make this engagement and these things possible, um, almost entirely self-contained. So we do a lot of the travel booking, the outreach, the financial planning, um, and what I in the way, the, the way that it works is the more experience you get, the more responsibilities you have in order to oversee and make those missions happen. So uh, both of us have been in for roughly about four years, mm. so we're fairly new. Um, but what I look forward to is when I get to maybe closer to a 20 year mark that maybe not performing as much, but having the option and the, uh, the power to sort of help set up events like this and send maybe younger people, younger musicians to go and experience the things that I've experienced. That's what I'm really looking forward to in this military career. Yeah. What about you? Maybe you can end the conversation. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for me it's, uh, it's, it's really just a continuation of, of experiences like this. Like, like um, Ashley said, it's, it's incredible. Um, I feel so fortunate to get to do this and I just want to keep doing it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's been a, a wonderful time here in Cambodia and um, we, we hope to come back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and sharing with us all of your experience and your time in Cambodia. Thank course, you so thank much. Thank you so much. And I'm really looking forward to your next visit to the country. Us thank too. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.